Welcome to the Accounting Influencers Podcast Network special bonus episode. We are looking back at 2022 and looking ahead to 2023. I'm here with guest host Dan Richards from My Firms App and Practice Win. Good day to you, Dan. Morning, Rob. Good to see you. Dan, we are at the end of a crazy year. We're actually coming to the end of a crazy phase in our lives as we emerge slowly from the pandemic, like a butterfly emerging from a chrysalis. So you've got your finger on the pulse. You talk to accounting firms, owners, business people all the time, and we're bringing you on just to give uh, our audience a, a little bit of perspective from where you sit. But just for people that don't know you, just tell us briefly what you do, Dan. Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks, Rob. So I've been working in the profession since the late 90s um, and have done various things over the years there. Um, Ten years ago, 2012, uh, we set up a business called My Firms App, and that builds apps for accounting firms that puts them at the heart of the digital relationship with each and every client and helps them to communicate so much more effectively and using push notifications and chat facilities rather than all the myriad of other stuff tools, uh, data collection and content and, and other clever things that sit in there. That's tremendous. And we do live our lives through screens these days. So it's only appropriate that you facilitate <laughs> accountants having those conversations on screens with their clients. That's great. So Dan, uh, give us a, a summary of 2022 for accounting. Any surprises, any key findings for you, any outcomes? What would you say? Yeah, I, I think it's a... When you talk about it at general levels, it's which is where the answer will be, it's always um, helpful. But of course, there's very many individual experiences throughout that, aren't there? And, and folks will have their own in there. But I think at a general level, it's been another tricky one. Uh, but then that's nothing new. <laughs> and so I think if we did this conversation at the end of each year, whatever that year has been, I think we could say that it's been another tricky one. There's been governmental challenges um, around the world. Uh, here in the UK, that's been particularly pronounced um, with the uh, pantomime that happened in our uh, parliament over the six months of the middle of this year, six, seven months. And we usually look at our American friends and say, you've not got a handle on the right president, the right leader of the nation, and you're making a mess of the <laughs> politics. But uh, yes, we've not shown ourselves in glory, have we, Dan, this last year? In, in... Uh, not one to be beaten on the world stage, Rob. We thought we had to go one better and uh, have 97 prime ministers and half a million chancellors or whatever it was within the space of a month. So it's, Other um, world leaders are available to mock as well, but uh... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we we'll we'll, uh, we'll self deprecate for a while, and we'll leave the rest of the world to uh, to look in the mirror themselves. Uh, the so it's been a challenge with those things. Then, of course, uh, there's been the war and the, the the sadness and the and the tragedy of Ukraine and what's happening over there, and the impact that's had at a global level. Inflation and how that's kicked in uh, because of the pandemic. Governments have spent a tremendous amount of money looking after everybody. And that was always going to come home to roost. Um, but of course, when it does come home to roost, it's always a surprise for most people. And the inflation uh, is uh, exacerbated by the war. And then, of course, you've got um, firms having to manage their own businesses. You know, they've got to live and operate through all of that. So how do they look after their own firms and operate that and look after their staff and their own finances? Uh, but then that also of their clients. And so uh, accounting firms often have a kind of a caught in the middle type experience where they've got to experience the same thing everyone is experiencing, but also look after their clients at the same time. And also here in the UK, we've had uh, MTD for ITSA, uh, which has uh, income tax and self-assessment, which has been getting prepared for all this year and the crescendo fast approaching. And then as of about 10 hours ago, uh, it seems to be on hold again and delayed out for another uh, until, well, until 2026. So it's, you know, when you've got firms that are living through all of that other stuff and then they're preparing for that, and I know other countries have similar experiences, and then suddenly it's pushed back out again. Yes, there are some positives in that, most certainly, um, but uh, that's also a massive frustration because your energies could be focused elsewhere. There's some talk that the accounting profession is bulletproof. It's recession-proof. It carries on regardless, almost like a tank. It just plows through things like this. And... Uh, I'm wondering what kind of shape the profession is in right now as we emerge from the pandemic and we we hopefully hail a new dawn with 2023. Um, to answer that and building off the last points there as well, there are also pockets of great successes for firms. You know, accountant, the accountancy profession is resilient without question. And the there's pockets of great successes. For, for example, for some, consolidation's working. We've seen some of the headline deals, haven't we? 
where you know firms have created billion pound value or billion dollar valuations there's smaller firms that are consolidating in with others and private equity and venture capital is making its way more and more into the profession there are those owners and leaders of firms who really focus on running them as businesses rather than just being an accountant i hope that definition makes enough sense and so they're often seeing some of the best results as well so i think the shape of the profession or condition it's in that there are some real pockets of success and uh, but some of the challenges i suppose that stand out from that still are that staffing remains tricky uh, you know recruitment and retention is a continued challenge uh, the but the need for quality accounting support from us business owners is as strong as ever and so actually the opportunity that sits aside those challenges and is held in tension is very much there um there's probably one other big theme maybe that I'd put out for that, the shape of the profession, profession which is needing to clean house a little bit. Now, the, the pandemic has necessarily caused a lot of rapid change, and that's cool, and, and there's natural and good things that come out of that, but one of the uh, consequences, which is not a fault-based thing, it's just a consequence of it, is you end up with quite disparate service offerings uh, with bits of technology stuck all around the place, uh, with clients suddenly communicating through different things, more like text and WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger and goodness knows what else. And so there, there's a bit of a cleaning of house needed as well, Te not taking the good of the change that's come out of the last two or three years, but making it work for the future better. Mm. I'm going to ask in a minute what we've learned about the software and the fintech and the vendors serving the accountants. But just to, to wrap that up, Dan, we hear from accountants that they've never been closer to the clients. But is that because accountants have been proactive in reaching out in these troubled times? Or is it because account uh, business owners are, are picking up the phone and saying, look, we really need some help from our trusted advisors to navigate through the murky waters and complexity of what's going on? I, I wonder if you were a school teacher giving a school report to accountants, how would you grade them? <laughs> I didn't get on so well at school, Rob, so I'm going to <laughs> run away from that part of the question. <laughs> the, um, I think uh, to the first part of the question is both. There are some accountants who are doing a really darned good job and they are proactive. And uh, most accountants, whatever else is being said about the shape of the profession, genuinely care about their clients. And so there's a lot of good that comes out of that motivation without question. Mm -hmm. And there is more, but not enough, of a drive from the clients. And I think you know, we often talk about accountants and what more can they do, but actually there's a responsibility that sits with each of us as clients of accounting firms as well to ask different questions, to behave differently ourselves, to expect more, but not in a nasty way, but in a, an encouraging way. And you know, if we have needs in our business, to articulate them better to our accountants, so it either encourages their development or they can simply help us better. Um, so I think it's coming from both sides. The key point from there, I think, is there is a responsibility on the client as to how they're going to act and behave in this as well. And I think there has been some real character growth in parts of the profession. So I wouldn't give a teacher school report, but I would say, like all best teachers, maybe to focus on the character, young and old uh, within the firm. There's been some real character growth and along with that continue. So not quite an A, but not quite a D either. Somewhere you're in gonna, the middle of B or you, a B plus or a C minus. <laughs> you're going to draw me on it, aren't you? Or a seven uh, my school ten reports. Or... <laughs> my school reports normally said A for effort, E for attainment. So yes. uh, I think Such they're doing better than I could, could do better, maybe, as a yeah, comment. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in the software world, Dan. You're in the, the mobile space very much, the content creation space. What have we learned about that ecosystem serving the accounting profession in 2022? I think there's a lot more collaboration now amongst the industry which is good. So if I, if I say the what you've just described as the industry and accounting firms as the profession yeah. and use that distinction, <laughs> then um, there's a lot more collaboration amongst the industry and that's really positive. You know, there, it's, it's, got, it's come out of quite a competitive in the early 210s setting to a lot more collaborative now and that will do good. It will do good for the industry and it will do good for firms. And, uh, and I think credit to firms, they've driven quite a bit of that. They, they've shown the way uh, for the industry to follow there. I think acquisitions will continue and that will mostly be for the good of the profession. Sometimes they're done for the sake of them, aren't they? But for the most of the part, it's about how can we bring things together to deliver a better outcome. And where most accountants really do have their clients' best interests at heart, really most of the industry does have accounting firms 
interests um, at, at the heart of what they do. And the while innovation will continue, there's also a cyclical nature, isn't there? Like there is always in life. And so things like the focus on mindsets and the boot camp type experiences of the 90s and the early 2000s, you know, there's, there's going to be a, a, a rolling out of the guard on that again, I think, and how that feeds through from the industry to the profession. And uh, the I think that the more the industry focuses now on making sure that the accountant remains at the heart of the relationship with their clients, which covers both that offline aspect, but also the digital aspect, uh, the better. And the broadly, I think, innovation and, and the, the money that's been spent from the industry is toward that direction. So just thinking more widely as we wrap up 2022, let's take it back a couple of years to pre-pandemic now. What lessons do you feel we've learned about what succeeded and failed in accounting over the last three years or so. Hmm. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a half a day's conversation in its own right. Yes. I think I don't know. I don't want to summarize it. The humility is desirable. I think that's come out of it, and and that's a real positive. It's the sort of thing that's easily lost in the melee of everything that's going on. Um, but uh, humility is desirable. I think that we've seen that change can happen and happen fast if it's desired and and it's it's sought after. The we were forced into that position because of some of the pandemic stuff, of course, uh, as a global society. But it the evidence is change can happen and fast if we determine it to do so and not to lose that lesson. Yeah, there, there's that old quote, isn't there? I think it's Churchill's that was used a lot at the early stages of the pandemic, which is never let a good crisis go to waste and let, let's try not to forget that the i think there's also been a and we touched on this a moment ago in the conversation a real clear reminder of the huge impact and benefit that the accounting profession has on small businesses hmm. and the millions of lives that those small businesses impact and that's you can see that across uh, across the world, in every country, the difference it makes. The accounting firms do stand in the middle of that value chain transaction sure. when it comes to money and tax and, and everything else. And so um, that's been really good. Um, I think one of the other sadnesses for me that's come out of it is all the negative slandering. The, the That happens in the profession. You know, there's a lot of friendly fire that still goes on. That happens between uh, kind of a us and them stuff between the industry and the profession in certain quarters, and that's not necessary. And it definitely happens at a political and a media level. And the and uh, where we kind of look for the worst in things and, and fault find, and then of course folks end up living up to that narrative, and that's quite damaging. So if we could get rid of that as fast as possible, um, then there was a moment in the last three years where we all decided that we should be positive to one another, and that seemed to make a big difference. But yeah. let's not lose that. Well, let's just twenty twenty two and. The COVID pandemic down, it, it, not to underplay all the things still happening there, and talk okay, about yeah. 2023. As you look ahead and look up, not so much crystal ball, it's so difficult to predict things, but what do you feel are the main challenges for accountants as individuals and even as firms in the coming year? Yeah, it's, it's very hard to predict, isn't it? You, you do your best, but many, most of us wouldn't have predicted what was going to happen this year, let alone the last three. So... Mm. Um, but to give it a go, I would say in the UK specifically, it's uh, making sense of HMRC and the continued uh, mess around MTD for its... Uh, a Majesty's the... Revenue and Customs for our international listeners. Uh, other tax yeah, authorities are available in other countries. <laughs> they are. And, and I know that the, uh, the US uh, and, and Canada and South Africa, Australia and Ireland and, and other countries where this is listened to, they all have their own challenges with their governments and mm -hmm. the announcements and the delays that follow out. It's just, it's quite acute here in the UK at the moment. Maybe a bit like the political stuff, Rob, we've decided that other people are having challenges. Let's do it better. Yeah, sure. <laughs> let's do most, make it harder. Well, let's so, do it worse. Yeah. <laughs> let's do it worse. Exactly. The, so I think that there's going to be a challenge there, um, but for firms to proactively, and this again is a, a global point, but is particularly relevant in the UK, Proactively use that time to do something about it. Let's stop sitting on our hands. You know, I was at a conference recently. I uh, listened to the Q&A that was going on with some of the leading uh, advisors on this, folks like Rebecca Bennyworth and others that are on the panel. 
but the quality of the questions coming out from the audience was shocking and the stuff that we should have known about six years ago not now and so if we can really use this time to better what we're doing in our firms change behaviors in the firm change behaviors with clients and so on then it, it has some merit that's going to come out of it mm-hmm. and also how the firm presents itself to its staff as well as its clients you know recruitment is a challenge and it's going to keep being a challenge going forward and the so what how is the firm presenting itself to its staff what culture is it building what communication is it having what processes and technologies and other such things are they putting in place that are making the job easier and more attractive to do how are they looking after the younger generation which makes up most of an accounting firm these days Mm -hmm. um, and uh, helping them not just to do the things that they have done the way they've always done it but take the best out of what the younger generation is bringing into the profession now how do we make what we do better you know we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but neither do we want to force everyone in into the mold that we've come from um, and if we do that, there might be a rising tide effect in each and every firm. And, and that could be quite exciting. And I don't know, challenges, cost of living is going to continue to be a challenge. And, you know, that matters at a personal level, doesn't it? So whether you're the owner of a firm, you work within it, or the, the client of a firm, the cost of living in various countries is going to keep being high for the next couple of years, I would think. And uh, that will present its own challenges. What about the opportunities, Dan? We know there are challenges, but there are also firms doing really, really well. I'm going to ask in a minute what mm. separates the good ones from the great, but certainly for opportunities for the profession generally, what would you say? The need for the uh, for the profession generally, the need for the accountant, as we said earlier, is stronger than ever. And so is are you operating a business that is in a sector that is high in demand and your services are well valued? Yes, you are. So that's very exciting because a lot of people can't answer to the positive in that question. And so the accounting profession as a whole, I think, has got tremendous opportunity going forward for those who want to take it. Yeah. So what do you feel, then, Dan, will separate the good accountants from the great ones in 2023? It's, I think it then takes what we were just talking about, Rob, down to the the individual level. So leadership, sorry, leadership, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Leadership and the control what you can control aspect of life. So leadership of firms, but but then the individuals who are working in firms, well, what can you contribute to that? The how can you exhibit the necessary leadership? When you look at really successful sport teams, for example, they talk about not just that they have a captain, uh, but or a coach, but they have really successful leadership throughout the team. And, you know, that transfers very nicely into this setting, because the uh, if we can operate our accounting firms more as businesses i.e be more commercial about them what is the things that we are measuring what do we value how do i stop being the blocker in the processes and the workflow from here how do i be more entrepreneurial in this space rather than just a practicing accountant the that's not a new conversation by any stretch of the imagination but it's still one which is only practiced by a few uh, and those are the ones who tend to be a lot more successful Mm-hmm. Uh, the so I think if we can uh, look at that, if we can, uh, without creating too much vulnerability in our firms by putting all eggs in one basket, but be really clear on who we work for and why. Again, not a new conversation, but the more that we do that, we can stick to our knitting and make it really good. And there's enough business to go around for folks from there. But th- there's also that twofold nature, I think, for those firms who want to embrace it. As we said earlier, consolidation is going to continue to be a thing. You know, firms who bring businesses, sorry, investors who bring firms together and create larger units out of those. There are great opportunities for those who want to embrace that in that direction. Mm -hmm. And there's also the flip side of that coin. There's a lot of opportunity for those who want to run lifestyle accountancy firms. And and that can work. You can make a nice amount of money. You can look after your family. You can do a good job for an appropriate number of clients and you can do very well. And there are certain numbers of those who are doing exceedingly well. Uh, some of which are very active on places like LinkedIn, you know, working from sandy beaches or, you know, in, in their back bedroom and, and seeing their children a lot more often, but still making good incomes out of it and delivering good values. So you don't have to become the next big conglomerate. If you want to run a lifestyle firm and enjoy doing that, there's plenty of opportunities to do. But equally, Dan, it's competitive out there. There are yeah. growing businesses, but also many more accounting firms and entities coming into the market. So what do you think might happen to the complacent accounting firms 
who won't change or can't change or have rigid business structures and business models and intransigent partners just waiting for the days where they get their equity <laughs> payout. What might happen to them? Uh, the, the same thing that's always happened. The So some will fail fast and some will trickle on. And the one of the difficulties in what you said there is often in those circumstances, those firms are still quite profitable and they have gross recurring fees and they don't want to change and they don't want to uh, grow the value beyond what they experience and what they understand it to be at the moment. And they want that to protect their future uh, retirement income. And so therefore not a lot will change in those situations. The and that might be okay to be honest if that's really what they want. But if you're working in that type of firm and that's not what you want, then you've got choices still. And competition, as you say, will prevail. It always does in, in this sort of marketplace. Uh, and there are options for you out there. And the I was reminded uh, the other day uh, a good friend of mine, the ex Royal Marine officer, and uh, he lost uh, a leg, uh, well half a leg uh, under the knee. He became, uh, this was quite a long time ago, uh, he became the first Royal Marine officer to repass the officer test The uh, and, and all the arduousness that, that carries with it. You know, it's a, one of the world's toughest military uh, tests. And the he did so with a prosthetic and became the first first person to ever do so and has gone on to do other amazing things since he retired from the, from the Royal Marines. And he has a, a saying, whether it's his or not, I don't know, but I like to attribute it to him, uh, which is the only thing that separates dreams from reality is action. And so in a competitive landscape and for firms, when they're looking at what they want to do, set up on their own as a lifestyle accountant, whether they want to go down the consolidation route, whether they just want to take the firm they've got, like folks like Will Farnell have done over the years and, and others and grow great practices out of the something that was old previously. Um, then uh, the only thing that separates that is action. So what action do you want to take? Yeah. This is great, Dan. Let's finish with asking you what you feel is coming up for vendors in getting the attention of busy accountants in 2023. Hmm. Um, yeah, the I think for vendors, the more collaboration. So the more that we can continue to collaborate together, the better. Uh, that has been a trend that's been going for a couple of years now. May that please continue. Streamlined solutions. So it's all well and good having lots of really clever things, but actually that could become very confusing in a firm. So how do we streamline those or help firms to streamline those solutions? And I think when it comes to talking, you know, there is something of a webinar fatigue these days. Uh, that's evidence. There is something of an email drop off. That's evidence. All the, the maths are there to support it. And everyone shares that experience. There are things like uh, practice win, if you don't mind me mentioning that. You said it at the start. Um, so practice win is something that we've created uh, this year and is already going down really very well I'm pleased to say and the idea of that is it's a free app for everyone in every accounting firm everywhere to access what they need to best run their firms and so it covers each and every aspect of running an accounting firm which we call a channel and each channel has a channel expert that uh, puts genuine education uh, educational and nurturing content into there that means that it doesn't just sit with one or two people who currently operate the firm. You know, in those earlier examples you gave, everybody in the firm could use that app and they can say, here's what's most important to me at the moment. It might be marketing, it might be technology, it might be tax, and, and therefore they can focus the feed and, and engage the content and chat with channel experts back and forth inside that environment if they want to in a really helpful way. And if you can, if as the vendors in the industry, if we can educate and nurture and get that into everyone in the accounting firm rather than just the same one or two people it will create that rise in tide effect and that will benefit everybody and those who've got good solutions uh, then as people's uh, knowledge of these sorts of things rises then they'll naturally choose the best solutions so it's up to the vendors to create those outcomes at the right time mm. and so if accountants are growing vendors will likewise grow and it should be a good year for all yeah, let's end on an optimistic note, <laughs> Rob. Yeah, it should, it should and could be a good year. It won't be without its challenges, but there is there is good to be had as well, most certainly. Yeah. And if the governments and the tax authorities can get their house in order, we'll all do okay. Dan Richards, thanks so much for your time and your insights today. That's been terrific. Thank you, Rob. Thank you.